Hi, everybody. Kristen DeFrancisco, Assistant Superintendent, Groton Dunstable Regional School District, talking to you a little bit today about using learning targets. And this is a terrific topic for your professional goal this year. If you are choosing to um, write a professional goal around something that's really going to engage and motivate students, which of course is always important, but even more particularly important when you are trying to engage and motivate children um, that are at home learners or that are in school learners. And so choosing this topic area, giving you a little bit of background on what it might be like to use learning targets. Helping students understand what they should know and be able to do at the end of a lesson can help them to be motivated and engaged in learning for sure. And as you're thinking about learning targets, providing student-friendly learning targets can model how students should approach a learning task, and they can also eventually write their own learning targets when they are not provided for them. And so in doing this and structuring this for them, getting them into the habit of mind of thinking, especially around a new time for a new concept, what am I supposed to know and be able to do when I finish this lesson? this lab, read this story, look at this article. So as you, as you are, I'm reminding you if, as you watched the initial vlog on planning a professional goal, it is always important to watch something, which you are doing right now, read something and write something. So the watching right now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience with student learning targets that as you begin to use them with students, they start to crave them. They really start looking for, what am I supposed to know and be able to do when I finish this lesson? Um, which is a, which once they've start, started to do that, you know, you, you've got them hooked on, on the challenge, being challenged. Um, they wanna understand what they should know and be able to do when they are done with the task. Um, using exit tickets can help students decide if they've met a target or if they still have some work to do. Um, not Todd, do, as <laughs> I'm reading this here. Um, you having those exit tickets in place, this is just another uh, teacher move that you can use in order to help uh, instill the use of learning targets, but also really be getting some good feedback from your students as well. So that's that's a t what I call a twofer. Um, I've used a lot the word swabat. So consider using swabat as you're thinking about learning targets. Swabat is what students will be able to do. So students will be able to, what is my SWABOT today? Um, and write targets in student-friendly language and ask them to read together before starting. So it might sound like, a, you know, today we're gonna start in a science lab today and I'd like to think about SWABOT and kids say SWABOT, students will be able to. And then they may talk about what it is they're gonna be able to do. Um, having them repeat them and really listen and understand what the SWABOT is, um, is you know the first step to releasing them off and doing that every single time and not taking for granted that you know you need to take a few minutes to explain what students will be able to do when they finish a certain lesson. Um, use an exit ticket as I talked about at the end of a SWABOT lesson so that uh, students will be able to give their feedback and answer a few questions about, can I really do what I'm supposed to be able to do? Or did I really perform the task I was supposed to perform um, during this class time? And inform, in follow, inform your following days of instruction with that data. If students were unable to reach the SWABAT, you might need to spend a little more, bit more time on it with certain groups. Other groups might be working with a different SWABAT. Um, but it, it is a, it's, it's a good way to also then universally design and um, set up ways for students to understand and know what they're supposed to be able to do. Read something. Um, you don't need to know absolutely everything about this topic in order to take the first step. Here's some places where you can start to get to know about learning targets. The chapter called Leaders of Their Own Learning it's a, the first chapter of a book, um, in, is included in our Learning Target PD. It's a great place to start. There are also video examples there if you'd prefer to watch a video. And I can show that to you before the end of the vlog and remind you that it's there. There's also additional resources at the end of your guidelines page uh, that you, we provided for you as a district. So I will go through those before you, um, we finish this vlog. So those will be things that you could read about Learning Targets. Write a little something. Um, there's a reflection sheet to think about why you want to use learning targets. It can help you start to actually write your goal. Why learning targets? 
Why did you choose that? And why do you think this is one of the ways you will motivate and engage students this year? So ask yourself those questions before you jump into using learning targets. Who are you checking in with? Uh, join a think tank. There are people around you, I'm sure, that are also going to be using learning targets. As you uh, plug into those uh, other educators, they are going to have ideas about learning targets and you can share ideas. Division of labor is very important when you're working on a professional goal. It's important to have people to talk to your work about. And so we will be working to make sure you know who those people are that are working on a similar professional goal. So in review, you are going to watch something which you've already done. You are going to see, you already feel accomplished. You're gonna read something, which I'll show you those options again. You are gonna write something, which takes time to reflect and think about where you are with this topic and if it's the topic for you this year. You're gonna check out a sample goal sheet provided. Um, and I'll show you, I'll actually show you that before we end our vlog today. And then you are gonna to start to write your goal using the goal writing assist template. So you'll actually have a template that you can go in and create your own goal. You've got this. Student learning targets are a wonderful way to start this school, any school year, but this school year. And if you st if we start doing this in our district, or and we will be able to create some through lines, and students will really start to get used to thinking about a swabot, perhaps, or whether you just call it a, a learning target in student-friendly language. Um, the student-friendly language part is really important. Um, so I am going to show you the something to read. This was the PD session that we provided to you, and the something to read is right here. This leaders of their own learning, chapter one, learning targets, um, so that you can read through that. Uh, the other piece that you can use while you are starting to, um, there's, a, there's a worksheet here built in as well if you want to take a, take a look at that and, and do some some even further learning here um, based on your something to read. But there's also, when you're thinking about writing your student targets, here is a resource, the top 10 UDL tips for developing these learning goals, you know, how, you, how you're actually going to do this in a way that's universally designed for your students. So here's a resource for that as well. Um, when we talk about the something to write about, here's your really, why did I decide to work with this? What is my entry point? What makes me excited about it? And what makes me a little nervous about it? It's important to think about those things so that you know they're there um, and you can plan ways to move around those obstacles so that you're really successful. And here is the example of what it might look like if you were working on your goal assist template and you were working specifically around student targets, student learning targets. Um, I have done the reading, I've watched, I've written and reflected, and now I'm going to take all of that information and use this on my form. So I do a little bit of that in specific, and I come up with a sentence, a summary sentence that says, student-friendly explicit learning targets can help students to be engaged in their learning because students have a clear picture of what they should know and be able to do after completing a lesson. I then go on to talk about how is this going to be measurable? Where am I? Where am I trying to go to? I want to use Swabot target goals in student-friendly language in both the content areas of ELA and math during lessons that introduce new concepts. So I've made this manageable for me and measurable and then I am going to use Swabot. I'm not going to use it every single lesson that doesn't feel like it's achievable for me, which is our next category we'll talk about. But I do feel like at the beginning of each ELA and math lesson, measurable, I've identified the lessons, I am going to use Swabots at the beginning of those, those content areas. And it might be a Swabot that lasts throughout a unit, but it's one that I would revisit. So that's how I'm going to approach it. It's where I feel like I'm at. I think that's achievable because I'm going slow to go fast. Um, I feel like it's relevant. I think learning targets are always relevant to use with students, but especially right now where we're finding ourselves trying to engage learners at home and learners in school, learning targets are going to work no matter what. Our concepts are the same for both types of learners. It's just the learning environment that is different. So we can still maintain these targets and we can do them in a universally designed way. We might video them, we might write them down, we might present them in a Google Classroom assignment. Time bound. During the first trimester, so I'm going to reevaluate after that, each introductory math and ELA lesson will, there's my sentence starter, I'm rewriting my summary sentences and I'm coming up with this goal. 
Student-friendly, explicit learning targets can help students to be engaged in their learning because students have a clear picture of what they should know and be able to do after completing a lesson. I want to use SWOT target goals and student-friendly language in both the content areas of ELA and math. During the first trimester, each introductory math and ELA lesson will contain a SWOT for students. Voila. There is my SMART goal around learning targets. I then put in some action steps, complete the district PD available on student learning targets, and complete the workshop the workspace template. Action step. And also, incidentally, becomes evidence. Um, I plan and introduce a SWOT lesson. What does that look like? I share with students, as you can see, each one of the things that I'm doing with students to set up the SWOBOT work is an action part of my action plan. Um, and in addition to that, you can turn those right into evidence. Um, evidence is what you will use to show that you're working on your goals. You completed the workspace sheet. You created a lesson about SWOBOTs. You watched something. You read something. You wrote something. Those are all things you can submit as evidence to your goal as sample evidence. And so... I wish you luck with your journey on your use of learning targets. I'm excited that you're thinking about this topic. I think it's a great way to motivate and engage students. I know that there are others around you that will also be doing that. And I look forward to hearing about what your conversations are with those educators as well. Um, you will have, uh, I think, much success motivating and engaging your students by using student-friendly learning targets. Perhaps even you'll call them SWBOTs. Um, I, again, thank you for watching and good luck on your professional SMART goal.